Today we're looking at the Instax V7. These are Fujifilm's cheapest Instax cameras. And in this video, I'm going to show you what's the difference between the various models. We'll also look at how to use them. And we'll also try to compare them with other Instax models to see if they are really worth the price. Or is it better to just buy a more expensive but more featured camera? So these three cameras are all called the Mini 7, but they have slight differences. This is the original Mini 7, the first budget Instax model that came out in 2004. The Mini 7S is functionally identical, except that the 7S comes with a house icon on top of the settings ring. It's just cosmetic. The Mini 7 Plus came out in 2021 and it looks different but it works in the same way. The main difference is that the controls on the 7 Plus are around the lens while the 7 and 7S have the controls on top. The Mini 7 Plus also cannot attach a close-up attachment while the 7 and 7S can. In this video, I'll just refer to all three cameras as the Instax Mini 7 since they all work in the same way. In order to use the camera, let's load it first. The Mini 7 uses 4 AA batteries. Make sure that you use alkalines and not heavy-duty batteries. Take note of the order in which the batteries are inserted and make sure they are seated correctly in between springs. Once the batteries are loaded, close the battery door and make sure that the battery door locks. Now let's load the camera with film. The Mini 7 uses Fujifilm's Instax Mini Film and it comes in 10 sheet cartridges. Once out of the box, the cartridge looks like this. Tear open the foil packaging and you get this. This is the film pack itself. Now there is only one way to load this in the camera. Open the film door using the latch and match the yellow marker on the film pack to the yellow marker on the camera. Yellow to yellow, that means you're good to go. Then go ahead and close the door. Once the film is loaded, pull the lens on your camera to turn it on. Wait about five to 10 seconds for the electronics to power up. And once the light stops blinking, you can now go ahead and press the shutter button. The camera will take a picture and eject this. This is the black plastic cover of the film and once it's removed, your camera is now ready to take pictures. The black cover protects the film from light, so make sure that you don't open the film door. If you do, you will damage the film and these are the images that you get. Take note of the film counter, which shows how many film sheets are remaining. So 10 means it has 10 sheets inside left, and zero means there's none left. The counter resets to S once you open the film door, and you start again at 10 once a new pack is inserted. Now let's go ahead to taking pictures with the camera. When shooting the camera, there are three things that you should note. The exposure settings, the flash, and the limited focus range. Let's look at the settings first. The Mini 7 is a manual exposure camera. For each picture or exposure, the photographer has to manually change the settings. The settings controls on top or on the lens have four positions. Indoor, cloudy, hazy and sunny. Most of the time you will be using the indoor setting so whenever you're indoors or it's nighttime or you're photographing using artificial light, basically anytime that the sun is no longer in the sky, you will want to use the indoor setting. After the indoor setting, the next three are for shooting outdoors. Take note of the sun in the sky and the shadows that it produces so that you'll know which setting to use. So the cloudy or shady setting is used when it's daytime but the sun isn't visible in the sky and there's no shadows that can be seen. Fine or hazy is used when it's outdoors and the sun is partially visible and shadows are visible but not strong. Full sun or clear is used when the sun can be clearly seen in the sky with no clouds and very strong shadows such as when it's noontime or you are in very bright con sunny conditions such as when shooting in snow or on a beach.
Now, manual exposure takes a bit of practice. It might seem difficult at first, but you should be able to get a hang of it after a film pack or two. Now, once you've acquainted yourself with the camera settings, we need to know about the flash. Unlike digital cameras, the flash is very important for the Mini 7. The flash always fires. It can't be turned off. It's needed to light up the scene whenever there's no sunlight available. The flash is effective only up to 3 meters or about 10 feet. So if you take photos in low light or indoors beyond 10 feet, you will only get a dark mess. So that's one of the main limitations of the camera. Lastly, there is also the camera's limited focus range. The camera has no autofocus, it's fixed, and the in-focus area is only about 60 centimeters to infinity. That's about the length of a person's arm. So you can't take close-ups or macro photos on this. You'll only get a blurred mess. If you have the 7 or 7S, you can attach an accessory selfie or close-up lens so you can take selfies. Just take note that if you have the 7 Plus, you're out of luck so the focus is limited. Just make sure that to keep your photos within the focus range and you'll be good. Overall, what do I think of these cheap cameras? Well, they are the cheapest Instax cameras on the market today and the quality shows. So they're not the most versatile, they're not the best in low light, but they're still cheap and basic cameras that will give value for your money. They're a good, cheap way to get into instant photography. There are no cheaper Instax cameras than this. They're best for documenting your life, taking pictures of milestones, taking pictures of friends and family. Don't expect it to perform as well as the latest iPhone or a good mirrorless or DSLR camera, but they will still work for you. They do have their own charm and of course they're cheap. The film is relatively affordable and it's high quality. The photos last for years, maybe even decades. They're really a nice way of preserving your memories in print form. How do they compare to the more expensive Instax cameras? There's the Mini 8 and Mini 9, which is about $20 more expensive. Uh, they're no longer available brand new, but you can find them online. The difference with the Mini 7s and the 8 and 9 is that the 8 and 9 have a meter that can show you what setting to use. Unlike on these cameras, you have to guess which setting to use. There's no guide for you. You just have to use your eyes. Now. The current budget models from Fujifilm are the Instax Mini 11 and Mini 12 and the difference with the Mini 7 and those two are that the 11 and 12 are automatic cameras so no more settings to choose, the camera just picks it and you, you just point and shoot it. So those two are much more convenient to use and they are actually the ones that I would recommend. But if I were to receive a Mini 7 as a gift, I'd still like it because these are pretty fun to use either way. There is also the much, much more expensive Mini Evo Hybrid that is about four times the price. That's a digital hybrid. The advantage with that is that you won't waste your film because you can choose which ones to print. With the Evo, you might spend more on purchasing it, but you kind of save on the film later on. So that's it for the Mini 7. I hope this video has been helpful for you. If it does, please do like, comment, and subscribe. That helps out the channel much. And until then, see you on the next video.